All right. Welcome to the Mad Maker Show 2018. What's up, guys? Um, well, <laughs> it's a brand new year, and we wanted to start off with um, Madness. So we picked Madness, yes, indeed. Um, we'll get to our guest in, in a second here. I just want to uh, welcome you all back. Boy, it doesn't seem like it's a new year. It seems like it's the same darn thing. Am I wrong or am I wrong? It is. Um, Everybody's still scribbling through their 2017. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> um, so anyways, for those of you that are joining us that haven't uh, seen the, sh the show and you're out on the web and you're you come across this, uh, this is called the Mad Maker Show, and the idea is we interview people that create things from woodwork to, um, well, in this particular case, tonight, um, if you haven't heard of this pretty cool tool, it's called a scroll saw. Um, well, the gentleman that we have tonight is going to talk a little bit about that because he's got a, a good amount of knowledge on it and um, drawing and all sorts of things. We'll get to that in a second, but we it, we interview people that do creative things, uh, metal work, uh, CNC, uh, anything and everything you could possibly imagine. We want to get in their brains, see a little bit about their history, their past, and um, just investigate. So Mad Maker Show, you can see right down here, themadmakershow.com. Check that out. My name is Eloy, by the way. I'm the host, and the co-host over there is JP, and I'll send it over to him. What's going on, everybody? Uh, I'm Jamie. You can find my stuff at uh, YouTube at JP Woodwork, and I'm one-fifth of the Makers International podcast. Uh, my website is jp-woodwork.com, all sponsored by Harnell Media. Um, a couple of bits uh, that I need to mention today. One is the podcast has a contest going on today where you can win a, uh, a blank by none other than Heath Knuckles and uh, a tub of Yorkshire Grip. Uh, the contest ends... January 27th. Um, so if you head over to the Makers International Podcast.com um, and go to Challenges and Contests tab at the top of the page, um, you can enter via there. Uh, the second piece of news is not such, uh, not, not the best bit of news by, uh, by any long shot. Uh, Rob Summerlin, his, uh, his son Brandon. He, uh, he suffers with cystic fibrosis um, and he has to go, undergo a double lung transplant and um, he's, a, he's, he's a bit of an artist, let's say, and he's done his own little rendition of what he likes to call uh, 65 Roses um, and he's, he's trying to raise a little bit of money. Um, so... For ten Canadian dollars, uh, ten Canadian dollars, sorry, plus postage. If you're interested in getting a print, which is selling off, um, you can go and see a preview of this as well, uh, which is also at magazinechatpodcast.com. At the top of the page, titled "65 Roses" by Brandon Summerlin, you can see a, uh, a preview of the print that is selling off, and you can also got uh, Brandon's email address if you wish to help out and all that good stuff. I mean, 10, 10 Canadian dollars isn't really much either as well for someone that needs double lung, uh, lung transplant, you know, so yeah, that, that's, uh, that's about it. All right. Thank you for that. Um, as we get the ball rolling tonight, uh, with the interview, you guys out there, feel free to ask, um, questions jp will check it out and um let me know and you know we'll do it organically and kick back because that's what we do right we want to uh do the interview but we do it kick back if there's any information that we miss well maybe the guests will come back uh next time around we'll see so um all right so today we have a gentleman that well i think i think he 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 lives in Texas. I, his name is Charles Deering, and um, it, I'm pretty excited to interview him because uh, I, I've I've gotten back into uh, scroll sawing. I, I I had the scroll saw for little things here and there, but I my mind was opened uh, to the possibilities lately, late in the year. Um, we'll get to all that, but Charles, welcome to the show. 
Thank you for having me, sir. I uh, uh, something I sincerely appreciate it. <laughs> See, I do the same thing on my show. Apparently, it it, it doesn't stop there. <laughs> it, it it goes with it. It goes along with you everywhere you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, that's fine. You know, we we were talking behind the scenes about um that we call this the Mad Maker Show, and it's I, I think it's just a perfect fit. You know, uh, especially because, with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it, we all have we all have. Are, are things all these people out there our friends our buddies and friends um out there i'm sure well i can't speak for them it would be nice if i could say hey all of it but i suspect if, if i were in las vegas and i'd drop you know some money on the table i just they all have their quirks and their things and you know uh so we're in good company that's the beauty right. of it you don't right. think so <laughs> no i agree i agree 100 percent. so Plus you got to be a little mad and have a sense of humor just to exist i think i agree with you you have to have some sense i mean if you don't have a sense of humor if you if you take yourself and the world around you too serious um then you will go like truly mad but not in a good way you know? i've seen i've seen me naked i, I have to have a sense of humor <laughs> <laughs> sorry for the viewers i had to picture that <laughs> So I just went downhill. No, that well, that's that's perfect. Um, who knows where we'll be in 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes, right? Uh, what yeah. conversations? <laughs> I mean, if, if you're already getting naked, you know, at this point, I mean, we even had we even ha we haven't even had little martinis or something. You're already yeah. streaking and stuff. <laughs> I'm drinking Dr. Pepper with a human hair in it, and I'm not wearing pants. <laughs> so let Sorry. me ask you, um, Charles. So give us give us a little bit of of your background uh life you know uh condensed version give us a bit of that let us know you know your station all right it was a rainy tuesday my parents were feeling frisky oh not so far back i'm a, sorry i'm an unemployed comedian anyway i uh 47 years old i know i look older because of the lovely gray hair uh born in okinawa my dad was career military uh god i'm not good at just listing uh no it's fine hit I us with a, what you got what comes to mind that's all that matters we don't want a particular timeline necessarily just hit us with the 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 visions right. that that <laughs> see how I did that, uh, yeah. <laughs> that pop into your mind well, not I everybody a, not everybody is the same and and I, I might add that to um you know for all of us you know not everybody is the same so it, it's just fine I, I i enjoy the the uh the particulars of each person so do it the way you see it all right uh well just a quick rundown i have a very close-knit family luckily they're all still with us uh my dad i don't know i'm getting a little personal here uh he was diagnosed with cancer and he was they they said nine months to a year and it's been closer to two or a little over so we're blessed there however you see that uh i have a twin brother two older sisters and uh, as far as my life uh i have a 19 year old biological daughter living in austin uh the love of my life uh oh wow it's really <laughs> not used to having to answer a question like this i, I should have expected it um oh, crap i'm just kind of going blank here um, that's fine um can it can i i'll, I... I'll, 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 I'll tell you what right i've actually been in a uh a hangout with charles and his brother and it has got to be one of the funniest things ever because and, and i'll tell you why i say it's so funny because they look because they're identical twins right for starters <laughs> Poor and guy. what i'm saying is is when when this hangout occurred i actually got up and walked away i had to go away but when i came back his, his brother was sitting down right so straight away i was like huh what's going on <laughs> right and then after that they're sitting back having a bit of banter between each other and all i could picture was charles was talking to himself on a different screen and they were just arguing with each other it was, it was, it was as if he was having arguing with the voices in his head that's, yeah, what but... I was, that's what I was picturing. You know, you have that little devil on the shoulder, and he's kind of like it's, it's Charles sitting on your shoulder. You got one little white devil, one little angel, and they're just shouting in your ear. 
<laughs> and we switch roles, which one's the angel. But we, we uh, <laughs> as far as uh, comedy in general, we're both kind of quick witted and we try to outdo each other. So that tends to either make us look really stupid or really funny. But Dude, that's something uh, I, I did. That's something I did not know. Um, what else? Hit us with a few uh, other little facts, you know, that you'd want to share. Um, I've got plenty of questions for you, believe you me um and 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 conversation bits that i'd like to get into but we we don't want to our intention is never to force it and i'm saying this not for you necessarily yeah. but for everybody so uh, it's reminded that the idea is to have a conversation and hopefully we we get some some inspiration uh sprinkled here and there but we want a picture of a person's you know backstory kind of sort of as much as as you know we can within the time and all that and then we get into you know um the, the the subjects at hand that we want to uh, delve into yeah so well as, we, as, go ahead no no go ahead as far as questions uh i'm probably more open than a lot of people so literally there's no limit to anything anybody in the chat or you can ask me i will answer anything with 100 percent honesty that's just how i roll uh i don't a lot of people tell me don't talk about this kind of thing but uh it's sadly a part of my life so i will just say it uh I do the scroll saw work and designing patterns because I'm just technical. I'm doing disabled in quotes because people think you have to be drooling and somebody feeding you or you can't walk kind of thing. Uh, you know, stereotyp stereotypically disabled. Uh, I have something called panic disorder. Basically, the chemical in your brain produced during fear is overproductive. I'm not diagnosed with depression, but I've been fighting that for quite a while now. Uh, so that kind of makes me who I am. I guess a part of me always wants to feel accepted and, uh, maybe even admitting this to myself, maybe even getting a pat on the back. Probably that's a, a childish part of me is wanting a, what's the word affirmation or I don't know, yeah. but, uh, uh, but I also try to give back and I don't ask of other people things I won't give right back. So that's kind of my character. And I, I believe that's just due to good raising. I mean, everybody, I'm trying not to get too, too philosophical or deep here, but my uh, when I was growing up, I thought I was I thought I was abused, but I wasn't. It was just a strict upbringing, you know. Uh, it was in my generation, it was normal to get spanked, <laughs> uh, and I want to make that very clear. I don't feel in hindsight that I was abused. I was just raised good, and that's what it took. And uh, you know, I I believe when you reach a certain age, you take responsibility for your own actions. Don't blame anything on your parenting, but I have no negative parenting to look, reflect back on it. I've never been to jail. Never, I don't drink. I don't do drugs. It doesn't mean that drinks drinkers are bad. It's just, I don't know. A good, good and bad can come from how you're raised, but I'm probably getting too deep on that. But uh, yeah, I just probably way too critical, critical of myself as we all are, but um, probably more so than the average person. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Duke just happened to mention in the comments that he's he's got a uh, he's got that as well. Panic disorder. Yeah. Wow. I'm yeah. Very sorry to hear that. I, I don't wish that on anybody. Um. Well, thank you for for sharing that, and Not and Bobby for for sharing that as well. Um. So I could share my, mine as well, but but uh, somehow I got to focus on. Well, I'll tell you that I, I went through a stint where that occurred to me, and it was uh, during a time where, you know, after my my mom had passed and stuff, and I would go through bouts of actual rage, like I'd sit and just rage, and then uh, also like just waking up, like gasping for air at the middle of the night, you know, just bad, um, just thinking, you know, and uh, th then I, that happened to me. Uh, where I, 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 you'd wig out, you'd be somewhere and you'd wig out and stuff. And, and, um, so I, the way I, I hate to say fixed it, but for me, uh, and when I bugged out one time, I, I stopped and I said to myself, you know what? I, I said this in, in, but it wasn't even, it's like insanity. It's like, you feel like running and like, you're not even that you're being chased. Like you got to kick in, you gotta, you gotta take off because something, you know, and I thought to him, you know what? Screw this. Like I, I had a moment of clarity, I guess, or, or a moment of like, screw it. You know, because yeah. you feel like like you're gonna go insane. You're gonna, well, like you're gonna explode. Either something's gonna happen to you. I mean, it's it sounds irrational, but it's like that adrenaline, that flight or flight, um, is is present right there at that moment because people bottle things up. 
Um, and some people live a lifetime and never experience that. And it's more common than, than, than people might think. But you get to a point where you hold things in so much because you're trying to be tough. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it gets to the point where you can't con and it comes out. Um, so it I stopped and I said, you know what? Do it to me. Whatever. Universe. Whatever. I'm not. And it slowly it stopped at that moment. It went down, 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 down. And I said, oh, you know, and yeah, that's definitely different levels of uh, panic disorder. Uh, sounds like you had the I don't know what it would be called, but uh there's different phases and levels. Some people have the agoraphobic side where they can't go out in public. I get that occasionally. Uh, and life events can can determine it. And as far as getting through one, some people can talk themselves through an attack or the problem itself. Uh, some people have to have meds. I kind of, For me, it's both because having it all my life, you learn with ways to deal with it. So, I mean, even if this show is seen by purely makers of any level, if you're going through it, talk to me because we can get through these things together. Little tricks uh, you play with yourself. You play mind games to get through it. Some of it is chemical, though. I I was no yeah there 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 it has to be there has to be a spectrum of it. I I just yeah. one last bit. Um, I, I was at one point, and we're talking 15 years ago for me. Um, but it it leaves such an impression of like holy smokes, you know. It'll, it'll dictate wow. your life. So. Um, about, well, that time I was at a supermarket at the sh checkout line and I'm about to pay. And it, it struck me this intense feeling of get the hell out of here, get out of yeah. here. And like, I had money in my hand to give the lady and she's there and everything slows down. And you're like, you're, you're like this. And I was like, I gave her the money and I'm standing there. And I, I had to control myself because I was <laughs> grab my bags and get the <laughs> hell out of Dodge. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, yeah, that happened. But anyways, is there anything else you want to talk about that before we, we continue? Uh, I, I try to fight it daily. Uh, it's not a daily occurrence, but it's why I can't hold a normal job because I can't consistently be up to par. Uh, I'll answer any other questions people may have about it, but I don't know what else I could say about it. I sh if, if you gave right. me an hour, I could probably fill it up with it, but. Let, let's move, um, let's let's move on. looking at this uh, looking at this chat room at the moment. You, there's actually quite a few people that can actually relate. Oh, really? Know, through, yeah, through, through whoever it may be, family or relatives or people that they know or something, they, they can seem to relate. So yeah, and well, some people can deal with it where they don't have to be on disability for it. I I just mine are often enough and and severe enough, for lack of a better word. That, well, 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 listen. I just want to say this: life is not it's not an easy thing the no. things that one goes through and experiences everybody's different um in how they they deal with it like you've mentioned and stuff but yeah. this life that we live um it, it's it's not you know i mean it, it's a big deal uh who knows what the heck's going on but um there's a lot of people that are strong and it, you get to a point where you're strong but um it just you know breaks you at a given moment you get back up you keep going but it's definitely a thing that's more common than than um than people might might think you know but yeah. let's move on let's move on to because i want to get to your 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 your, your oh this is a big big issue but i want to get to other things is there anything else though uh, for the moment the answer is no the answer should be no because we want to move into a, a different area well, i know eloy there is not <laughs> <laughs> so charles let me ask you this uh or originally uh growing up uh what what artistic things i think you 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 drew yes so when did you pick up drawing oh. <laughs> and sketching and whatnot well, I don't know. I don't know how old y'all two are, but anybody out there might remember in elementary school they had something. Well, they called it Ditto pages, I believe. They were purple ink. Had a Is weird... that? Fred, I think Fred Flintstone and B Barney Rubble. Yeah, uh, used to... it was right after that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I used to turn them over when they had pictures on them and trace the pictures. And one day I decided to stop tracing and tried to draw it next to it. And the rest is history, so to speak. I mean, I can go into more detail with questions, but uh, that's when I got started with elementary school. But I think the first thing I drew was a Sports Illustrated 
cover of, I believe it was Dan Fouts, Chargers quarterback. I, not that I'm into them. It just I just happen to remember that was verse drawing I tried real hard at. <laughs> now, for those uh, of you out there that, that don't know, um, Charles works with the scroll saw. He does a few things, um, and we're going to get to that. Um, actually, I was going to re reveal it. I guess I, I will, and we'll go from there. So, Charles, you not only do you work with the scroll saw, uh, portraits, pictures, uh, framed art with the cutting those out on the scroll. So not only do you do that, but you also have an extensive um, collection of patterns, uh, templates that you create uh, meticulously little by In fact, on, on your channel, you teach people and you have DVDs. I mean, there's, we'll get into all that, but so, right. so, I'm sort of going a little bit bit off here, but I, I I'll focus on this first. Um, when did you pick up the scroll saw? Uh, it was 1997 because I was in a in a marriage I was not happy with. Uh, okay. My daughter might be watching, so I don't want to go too far. <laughs> uh, I some what I consider junk mail at the time. I got one of the pattern catalogs, and Believe it or not, I had never heard of a scroll saw, but I was looking through it and I thought this is kind of cool. And the only tool I had that could cut like that was a jigsaw, or some people call it a saber saw. Mm -hmm. So I did a four foot tall tiger tiger's head, and then I got one of the cheaper scroll saws. And I don't want to say the rest is history because <laughs> I sucked when I started. Um, I found out real quick that I liked spiral blades because they could cut in any direction. But uh, it was 1997. I don't know if I said that. Yeah. Uh, uh, and right around that time, well, never mind. You haven't asked about designs yet. But uh, yeah, that 1997 is when I got started. And I, you know, I did the typical. Now, most people won't admit to this, but I'll be the first to admit it. Uh, I was <laughs> poor and broke. I, although I didn't know what I had back then, so I was employed, couldn't keep a job. But when I did, I finally got a scroll saw, and I forgot what my point was <laughs> about being broke. Oh, what most people won't admit to is they will take those catalogs and take them to a copier and enlarge the, the pictures there. That's why I, you often see me requesting people to post finished pieces at an angle so the design can't be stolen because every little bit helps. But right, uh, yeah, most people. That's how I did the tiger set. Is I, I. No, that was my own design. Never mind. No, very good. Um, I know that JP <sighs> has a lot of um, um, connection but, to you because of the tool and stuff. He's got um, things to show. Um, what I'm going to do, because um, I, I want to sort of, since JP is knowledgeable, you're knowledgeable in this field, and I, I want to let you guys, I want JP to demonstrate, or I don't know what you brought over to show everybody, but can you do a little bit of that, you guys, and then we'll get back to talk whatever you want about that because you've got some samples to show. Well, the only the only example I have near me is one that people have seen on the last few times I've shown examples was is a Harley Quinn. It's I got that stuff on my screen, so I don't know how well that shows up. It needs a back background in yeah, order yeah. to see the. Thing. I, I've got a. Uh, I've got one that's got a background on it. Yeah, we'll, we'll use JP. <laughs> this one took me 30 hours to do. That's one of my favorite designs, too, and you did an awesome job on that. And that's why I started doing them like that because I didn't, and, and this is no disrespect to the designers of the era, I didn't like the lack of detail. Everything looked like it was done out of a coloring book, you know, and everybody has to start somewhere. But I'm a realist because I used to draw realistically and cartoony. But anyway, I, uh, that's why I started doing detailed stuff like that because there wasn't enough of it out there. And now it's somewhat shot me in the foot because most people are intimidated by my designs. And, uh, I'm not, I think they're easy, <laughs> but you, he'll post on Facebook, <laughs> Facebook that I, I hate Charles again this week because he's working on one of my designs. I hate myself when I'm working on them, <laughs> but then you got that sense of pride when you're done. And that's why. Yeah. Know, that, that and, yeah. Yeah. Can can JP, JP can you give us a little bit of insight since you've that's not you've done a is that the first one you did a, with uh, Charles? Charles actually did a, a custom uh, one for me. Uh, I did a 
scroll saw piece of uh, Nick Zametti from NZ wood turning, oh, yeah. uh, which he holds up in, which is actually seen um, on his, uh, which you see on his uh, vlogs and on his intros to his videos and all that lot. Um, he's a guy that's uh, sort of that maker central and all that lot. Um, so yeah, I did. Uh, Charles did that one for us. Um, he yeah, did, show me uh, some love, Nick. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, the, <laughs> the the zombie uh, from The Walking Dead, uh, and I've actually got a, a few more out there. Um, Charles uh, designed the Queen that I'm working on. Um, uh, there's a there's a few others that, I, that uh, Charles has done. I can't remember. What, I honestly can't remember what other ones I've got over here. To be honest. Yes, you got got quite a decent. I can't, one, I I, yeah, I've got the fly on the eye or something. Yeah, and uh, I, I can remember saying I remember sharing on my mouth because I've, I've, I've got a load from you and I took them I took them all to the printers and uh, I get I get each of them printed off at like, two different sizes and I bought them home and I said yeah mum do you want that one up on the ball. And she went, I ain't having that on a beeping wall. <laughs> I do have designs like that too that are not, uh, yeah, one hundred percent family friendly. But I, I haven't done porn yet. Who who yeah. is out there? J JP, could you tell us who's out there in the chat, just so we know what what's? Yeah, I can give you a rundown of people out in the chat. We've got uh, Temple Turnings, uh, Timber New, Mark Lindsay, CNC. Uh, Be Happy Woodworking, Jay Thompson, who's got a scroll saw as well. It's a rickety thing, but he's got a scroll saw. Uh, Bear at it Woodwork, uh, Woodshop, sorry. Herb Lichtenberg, Crosscut Creations, Tom Spillaney, uh, uh, Paul Woodworks, Jamie Asker. Oh, Charles, have you ever cut, uh, cut yourself on a scroll saw? Mm, no. I, I, I hesitated because I didn't want to make fun of Eloy. You'd ha almost oh, have to... You'd almost have to be trying to cut yourself on a scroll saw, but it is easier with a flat blade, and all I use is spirals. And let me let me just to my look. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say something about that. Look, <laughs> there's a, an old who's that guy that everybody loves um, that that has that that show. Uh, he doesn't have it anymore, but but people keep watching it, and he teaches the scroll saw, and he teaches. I don't know the guy's name, whatever, if you figure it out. But in one of his episodes, he's, he says, if you want to introduce your children into woodworking, the best and safest tool to use is the scroll saw. I mean, look, and he's playing with it and stuff on the video. And I'm like, oh, look how nice. Well, so um, in my defense, <laughs> I knew I knew, I knew, I knew, we shouldn't have, have had this scroll saw show. Um, in my defense, <laughs> I was doing back-to-back -back scroll sawing getting ready for the show uh for the fair with javi from javi's wood shop um here in miami there's a thing called santa's enchanted forest and we tried our hand over there had a booth in this that i was prepping up to it and i was like me 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 and boards and cutting it and in one of them i was doing like i don't know what i was doing but i was doing a turn and i was i was forcing it and the blade turned and the piece cut and i went me it was like a little deeper than a paper cut, but just the same. I posted it. I, I said, I gone and done it. It's it's they said it wasn't uh a doable. I cut myself on a scroll saw. Jamie Page <laughs> grabbed onto that and ran with it. And it's like everywhere now. I cut myself with uh, a freaking scroll saw. Yeah, it can happen. I mean on, sir, on, on the rare serious note I have, on a flat blade, it can happen because all the teeth are on one side and you take your eye away for even a split second. But you said the blade was twisted, uh, and I had another point. But this is typical Charlie. I'll start a sentence and forget. But uh, uh, the, the good news is it is child-friendly because you cannot cut your finger off unless you have no feeling <laughs> in your finger and you're a mad maker. Stay tuned for next week's show because there'll be two people that's cut themselves on a scroll saw. Who's the next one? No, I can't tell you that until next week. You have to tune oh, in. It's got to be Carl Jacobson. Because <laughs> he's new. <laughs> he is. He did. Oh. He did. Oh, Carl. Kick it out. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel way better for some reason at this point. Because <laughs> you got a homie. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we start roll. Around, they're gonna start their own club now. Blood Brothers for. <laughs> <laughs>
No, on, on a, uh, for anybody that's never touched a scroll saw, you cannot hurt hurt yourself. You know, seriously. I mean, nothing more than a, a little nick because it's impossible yeah. unless you hold your finger up to that blade and feed it in it's not gonna hurt you yeah. more than a little neck yeah, yeah be kind of huh, what's that oh okay <laughs> plus when you, you know, get to be around my age um, you tend to hurt yourself and not even know how yeah. you did it i, I do hear uh, i do hear just w real quick jp i, I do hear that st saw stop is going to come out with a scroll saw uh yeah, or it automatically <laughs> breaks a blade for you <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, anyway, we've, got, we've got a couple of uh, questions from the chat. Okay. Uh, Tim Bruneau says, uh, what's the longest amount of time you spent on the scroll saw project? Oh, my God. Well, I never do it nonstop, but in my younger days, I could spit. No, I, uh, I suck at keeping track of time, but uh, I did a five-foot-wide portrait of Metallica. And just the logistics of I don't know if logistics is the right word. Trying to handle a piece that large. And it was somewhat detailed. Uh, God, I have some that aren't huge. Well, in my opinion, they're not huge, but I tend to do pretty large. But uh, God, I would say 40 to 50 hours. I, I truly don't know. Some of them can take weeks. It, it just it depends on how life is going around it. <laughs> Fair play. Um, and uh, we've got one from Matt Hoss from Awesome Wood Things and from the channel Awesome Farm Things. He says, uh, photos of Charles's work online are formatted to deter people from stealing. Are the countermeasures going too far? Example, tilted words over, art blurry. Love to see clear pics. Love your stuff. Yeah, and I get that and I hear that occasionally. Uh it is paranoia on my part because every little bit helps. And I, I should just realize that the average person is not a thief. But like I admitted in the beginning, you know, getting a catalog and zooming, blah, blah, blah. But uh, every time I I don't take those measures, somebody will write to me and just say, I just thought you should know that I was able to take your picture and use it as a pattern. And I try to make it where they're legible. I, it's getting, I used to blur the living crap out of them. Now I do a skew where it looks like you're looking at it from a three quarter angle. So I hope that help. I hope that changes. Well, I, I did that with your, uh, with that guy's website, didn't I? I just I, I messaged him and told you that I was able to zoom in enough where yeah. I could easily steal it. Yeah, my last website. Uh, I believe it was my last. No, because my last website got a lot uh, of complaints that they were too yeah, it was a guy that was uh, doing the Intarsia with you. Oh, with Bruce Worthington. Yeah. Like that. yeah, but that wasn't yeah. his fault. It was just we, we chose a thumbnail size. And, yeah, and, you know, no 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 defense except for I, I find them all, all the time online. And the worst, this is not to sound racist, but the worst offenders are Middle Eastern, Middle Eastern and Russians. Not saying all of them are like that, but you go to their groups, they're just handing them out like candy, all kinds of designers patterns. So I, I'm just trying to deter that, but I'm um, hopefully my new method of not really blurring it, but having it at an angle will prevent that. But they can see enough, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, right. We've got a couple more questions. Um, just two seconds. I'll just write them down. Right. Sterling Davis says, uh, "You hurt yourself. Um, you hurt your said Charles. You hurt yourself. You hurt yourself by not doing more simple patterns. Why don't you?" I get that all the time, and it's because I'm procrastinating. Well, two reasons. I'm procrastinating because my passion is realistic art. Uh, but also, <laughs> I, I, and I know Sterling seen me say this on shows before, it's actually hard for me not to see detail and not add it. So rather than take the time and the willpower to retrain myself to do simpler versions, I take the easy way out and do what I've always been doing. And I keep saying, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. And I never get around to doing it. And other people have suggested, well, when you're part way through with the pattern, stop. But to me, it doesn't look done enough. I mean, if you watched my last couple shows, I was doing a lighthouse. Those look overly simple to me. 
and that's not to sound arrogant. I, I love detail, <laughs> but yeah, agreed. I would get more sales if I did simpler patterns and someday I'll kick myself on the butt. But you hear me say that every time I talk about this someday yeah. I will do it. And some of my patterns are easy in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, what one more for the time being um, from Steve Twardell goes uh, Charles did you ever get halfway through a project and think oh man this sucks and give up on it um, well I'm kind of biased since nine times out of ten I'm cutting my own design <laughs> but the time it takes and the like if i'm doing like hair on a detail uh, i mean hair in a detailed portrait you know it's little bitty triangles little bitty shapes here and there i get burned out a lot but i wouldn't i wouldn't say bored but i've destroyed pieces i, I mean i had a uh, a very intricate fretwork eagle it's like a pow flag thing Mm. And uh, I, I didn't get bored with it. I totally went off the rails with this. Uh, but as far as breaking things, I was sanding it. I had already finished cutting it. I was sanding it, lost grip, it flipped off the table, broke into a million pieces. But I don't know that I've ever actually gotten bored with one. But, well, the ones I get bored with are ones that it's usually a request for something simple from a design they've already given me. But it's because I'm not into the, yeah that that there's your answer if it's a simple one in my de definition yeah. of simple I get bored with it. it it's it's I, I can kind of understand that if someone come to me and said I want some really cool tiger like the one and there goes Jamie. Did he okay. just freeze? Yeah, we got your audio now, uh, Jamie. Yes. Oh, there you go. So yeah, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just knock the uh, the my thing out. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you knock your I thing can, out. I can, yeah, I knock <laughs> the uh, I knock the camera uh, the USB cable out. Uh, yeah, I can totally understand what, what you're talking about. If someone comes to me and says, "I want a really cool tiger," for example, and uh, you kind of get into it because you see it coming to life as you're doing it. And I, I really got into doing it, despite the fact I hated you for so many hours a day doing it. <laughs> Because my foot was killing me. But then if someone comes to me and says, oh, I want a really nice little Hello Kitty sign for my daughter's bedroom door, I'll be going, you're kidding me. Well, <laughs> I think that's the side don't... of us makers that want to challenge ourselves each time we sit down at the saw. And in a way, you yeah. and I both have shot ourselves in the foot because everything we do, we want to outdo ourselves, and eventually we're not going to be able that's to. That's it. That's it. it. It's kind of I, I can't. I and you, you, you you're the same. You can't really go back to doing simple projects because you can sh you've shown what you can do. Well, the, the one benefit to that is be the average beginner or somebody just even looking into it, they see it as you're catering to them. So that helps in that sense. I mean, they don't feel like, well, I'll never be able to scroll because, you know, you can show them, you know, this is how you do the simple stuff. You know, so I guess it has its advantages, but as far as channel growth and showing our work yeah that's it's a detriment to us but i think beginners appreciate it and it's, yeah it's, so you sort of get the idea of what i'm talking about it's hard to go backwards on detail it's hard to go backwards on cutting detail as well but but yeah. uh, it's easier than trying to design backwards the, 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 <laughs> the one good thing i can say about that tiger is that doing them tigers was the second time i'd ever used spiral blades Show it again. Second time I'd ever used spiral blades in my life. I love it. I'm a little biased, but it, it, it's it's dang good. I mean, the patience, and, and I'm, I know that this is why Jamie jokingly says on Facebook that he hates me. And hopefully, it's jokingly, but because it it is a pain in the booty. <laughs> trying to stay fam family friendly. Pain in the rear when you're working on it, but when you're done, that sense of pride is overwhelming. Especially when people, oh my gosh, oh my god, yeah, yeah. But it, it, it's it's the thing. It's when you want to do something so bad, and you 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 have no other option but to use. I mean, I could have gone uh, smaller, and but I don't think it would have been as good if I was to use a a straight blade. 
<laughs> um, but uh, I, I obviously could have done a could have done it with a straight straight blade. Um, but um, I, it's one of the things that I, I forced myself where I had no option but to use a spiral. It was either do it or it ain't getting done. Well, I, I tried a flat blade one time, and YouTube got to witness it. It's on my channel. It's so laughable because I wanted my first time with a flat blade to be witnessed by however many watched it. <laughs> and it's still on my channel. It's trying a straight blade for the flat, uh, a flat blade for the first time. I don't know if I said straight or flat, but anyway, and it's laughable. I, I thought it was easy, and people think the same thing about spirals if they've never used one, but. To me, it's second nature to use spirals, but I, I prefer to do this with a spiral blade instead of this with a straight blade. You know, can, so you, that, can you speak to to that? Um, to so not everybody's got the big daddy um, scroll saw uh, set up because you've got I think a Dewalt, yeah, uh, uh, Hegner, Hegner, Hegner. Um, there are for the and JP had mentioned this to me one time. There are for the smaller saws or the the um i guess beginner type saws or less expensive saws uh adapters or can you guys talk about that a little bit because if a lot of people might have a scroll saw sitting in the corner they might want to try something more complicated uh, uh, yeah. um there's a company for, uh, called olson um i think it's o l s o n oh, it could be e n i'm not yeah, sure it is o n um they make a uh, an adapter that changes your um skull saw from a pin blade uh skull saw to a pinless blade sc uh, skull saw and it will fit most um 16 inch scroll saws because m m m most 16 inch scroll saws basically all come out of the same factory and then just go all the separate ways into different paint booths yeah <laughs> exactly well, you know, and that and uh, the pin end and the non-pin end are the only time you need an adapter. If, if you were wondering, Eloy, uh, a flat blade and a spiral blade will fit in the same holder. Uh, the only time you ever need an adapter is is uh, with a pinless or pinned. The, the, the older saws had only pinned end, and not every one of them can take an adapter, but some can. And there's a site that starts with a P. Rick Hutchison knows it, and it's on one of my real old videos. But uh, yeah, that's the only time you need an adapter is going for using a saw that was made for pinned in blades. This is an aftermarket thing that allows you to use non pinned in blades, which is an, an advantage for those people that can't afford to go out and get another saw that will take pinless blades. And uh, also, uh, something that you, uh, if you're really, really um, struggling and you, you're really desperate. And maybe you've only got to do one or two cuts. You can actually force the pin out of a pinless blade and then put it back in. It's a lot of messing around, but it can be done. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I did want to uh, also mention that. So w I've never sat in and done on the scroll saw a portrait or anything to that. I've used the, the and I've mentioned this before. Um, Maybe not non-traditional ways, but I guess I've used it to cut out. Uh, so I, I was making boxes, and I was doing wooden hinges, and I'd use it to cut. The, it just it, I found it perfect for for doing that, because uh, you get get in there and get you know three dimensional with it and all that, and yeah. little clasps and all that, um, which is what I really was using it for, and cutting out shapes for. But because of this thing that was occurring p this past year, at the end of the year, where I had to do the the festival or fair, um, I started doing wall art stuff, and it opened up my mind to. I, I haven't gotten to what you guys do, um, which I'd like to try. I don't think I have. It takes a lot of patience. It's the scroll saws are very, doesn't it? Right. Well, that that that's the main thing is. Once you learn how to keep the blade on the line, the rest is, in my opinion, it's only patience. Even if you don't keep it right on the line, people to this day, I'm sure me and Jamie both, can't always completely stay on the line. But that's a matter of your confidence level, the all, all kinds of things. But I interrupted you, so back to nope. you. I, I, well, because I was... 
I was derailing again because my brain's going 30 different directions, but no, but that's that's an, an important information now. That's also, the that's, <laughs> that's the beauty. That's the beauty of having the name. See it over here and visit the, the, the website, please. It'll help out. You go in there and, and, and look around the madmakershow.com. Um, so just check that out. But madmaker means we're crazy. So I, I never even threw, threw out my social media. Is it okay if I do? No, no, we don't allow that on the. Okay, Mad well, I'm a Maker rebel, so I'm gonna do it anyway. No, 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 no. <laughs> listen to listen, listen clearly. On the madmakershow.com, we do not allow such things. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. Mentalmakershow.com. Okay, no, uh, my website is woodenvisions.com. That's right now. It's 99% scroll saw patterns, but uh, YouTube. If you want to see. It's been a while since I've done an actual project, but I do have project videos on there. And I believe I go by Charles Daring scroll on there, but you can just look up Charles Daring. You'll see a wood grain picture of me doing this. And it's not smell my finger. <laughs> and I also have uh, Instagram, the Charles Daring, Facebook, the Charles Daring. I have a Twitter, but I don't use it. Uh, but yeah, Instagram, I'm starting to get a little more active on. Uh, um. Yeah, we're we're gonna at the end we'll no we'll mention again we'll, there's a spot for that but on that site since you're mentioning it woodenvisions.com um if you guys check it out you go in and there's just a list you can you can look for anything i mean you got like two thousand how many patterns do you got uh between 14 and 1500 that's insane what <laughs> My earliest ones are laughable. I mean, that's what people would call simple. But and I, that's not to make fun of beginners. But in the beginning, looking back at my old patterns, holy monkey, I was terrible. But uh, that being said, uh, my website as well as yours and Jamie's are done by Harneal Media. That's yep. Steve Neal, and I forgot to mention that, and I apologize. Um, I also sell T-shirts that have my logo on it of me going scroll on with the text okay. underneath, or just the word scroll on on the thing. So. If you'd like to help support my broke butt, then I do sell t-shirts, men and women's. And uh, and I just recently started a Patreon, but I will not spam the show. Back to you, sir. Um, so ju just so that you guys know out there, uh, Harneal Media, it, it, they're our webmaster for all our sites. Um, and I went with with them. That's Steve Nealon. Um, it's just he's a maker. And I've I mentioned this in every show. Uh, they do a fantastic job. They set up my website, like themadmakershow.com. When you go in there, or for that matter, uh, JP's site or um, Charles's site, uh, Chad from Man Crafting. I mean, oh. it goes it goes on and on. Uh, Miter Mike, uh, geez, Makers International. He uh, Steve takes care of Makers International as well. Uh, who else? Um, well, well, he specializes in maker sites, but can do any site. But uh, and mine was a big test for him. Not a test, but a big pain in his rear. He may not come right out. No, he'll come right out and say it <laughs> because fourteen. <laughs> at the time, I think I had about thirteen hundred patterns, or closer to fourteen. I'm not sure, but he worked day and night. This guy, if he's awake, he's at his computer working on somebody's site. He's very with it. Yeah, it's tough. The, the The whole thing. So it, it's good, I, and I don't want to get off topic, but it's it's since it might interest someone having a website. Um, or for for me, it's good because I can write. Like for instance, the Mad Maker Show. I write, and I'm behind right now, but I write articles and I post them so that there's a Q and A um, connection to the actual video. And I figure in the long run. Uh, if somebody's interested in Charles Deering and it, it pops up, they see that and they they go or if they've never seen his work they see that on the website and they go it's just a good thing to create connections and stuff plus you can sell stuff on your website um and and just you know promote your ideas and concepts so it, it's a good thing to have so if you if you're interested in that the links are on in the uh description yeah, below to everybody uh charles i also all your stuff is listed there as well appreciate uh, it. by the I way steve nealon is very 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 affordable very competitive. Yeah, uh, right thing. Uh, Steve is also work. Just uh, said over in the chat that he's working on yours now. <laughs> Mine. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think he must have a, a computer open just for you. 
Oh yeah, I don't. I wouldn't doubt that. Uh, yeah, I think he's uh putting uploading my latest batch of patterns into the newest. By the way, if you just happen to be a fan of my designs and don't know when there's newer things out, but always check the newest. It's it's titled newest. The folder called newest. Even if they aren't categorized yet, uh, it, they will at least be in the newest uh, pattern folder. All right. So now let me let me get get to some Mad Maker stuff here. So let me ask you: um, You live in Texas. Uh, whereabouts? I live in Gatesville, about forty-five minutes southwest of Waco. That's the and biggest city near me. What's your what's your surroundings environment? I mean, I know it's kind of deserty, uh, right? Actually, it's not. So many people think that about Texas. Yeah, the horses are like, back. You don't, you I tell you, you have, what, you don't have like one cactus sitting there, and uh, and and horses out back. Uh, uh, no, horses are expensive. No, uh, <laughs> I can't even drive a stick ship, but that's another story. Uh, uh, no, it the area. Uh, <laughs> I love the country, but uh, you open you yeah. open the door of your house and like a tumbleweed just goes whack right in your face. Yeah, and you hear this Clint Eastwood whistle every time something goes wrong, but uh, or there's a bully or something. But uh, I the the pop population of the town I'm in over half of that population is the prison. There's a uh, I think it's just called Gatesville Prison, but they have different units, and uh, there's actually some well known murderers. Or thieves, whatever criminals, in in this place. But uh, yeah, Gatesville Con convicts. Yeah, that there's that's the word. <laughs> words aren't my strong suit. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a smart man, but I know what words are. Well, so you're, <laughs> so you're saying your area is not desert, deserty. It's, so no. it's pine, pineland. There's no pine is more of a North Carolina thing, but uh, most most common got pineland here. Well, North I mean, Carolina. yeah, there's pines here and there, but I mean, uh, the most popular trees in Texas, at least in the places I've been, are definitely cedar. And you'll find out if you have cedar fever by hanging out with those, and pecan and mesquite. But okay. you know, there's there's other other trees out there like oak. And, How far are you from the uh, coast? Oh. Ocean. Probably four to six hours, if not more. Oh, okay. I'm almost, well, I wouldn't say dead center. I'm probably a little right to center. Uh, I'm about halfway between Dallas and Austin. So Dallas is up here. Austin is down here. I'm yeah. right there. <laughs> um, is So, so wow, that's interesting. I didn't know that. So there is a, a prison there, and and that's the town. I mean, that's the main thing in the town, a prison? Well, I wouldn't call it the main thing, but yeah, that's that's for at least the population because towns get amenities like, you know, Walmart, this and that, based on their population. And lucky for us, most of the population is prison. So even though it's somewhat of a small town, but not like everybody knows everybody because I barely know anybody because that requires leaving the house. But yeah, the uh, there again, derailed. How 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 many days on horseback to get to the nearest Walmart? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's about four hundred clippity clops till you get there. No, it's about three miles down the road. But uh, I haven't ridden a horse in years because I don't have access to them. But uh, I'm just ex exaggerating. I, I know. I'm just I'm just kind of going with it. But <laughs> so we'll just keep tumbling down that road if we uh, keep got, going. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> But you do have to talk funny to live here in Texas. So I tell you what, you just mosey on down here and by God we'll keep you entertained. So when you when you um start off pattern making, um you have your, your picture that you wanna you don't you don't work you actually work more traditional to get to that that pattern uh by using uh graphite paper and carbon paper and, and whatnot. Can you give us a, a sort of a condensed rundown of how you get those patterns done? And then from there, cause it's actually, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, you can, you can correct me, but from there, how do you get it into a digitized or you don't, you do to, I mean, explain that. Okay. Well, real quickly, you said traditional, traditional is most people do it on a computer. But, uh, what I, what I do is cause I can't draw with a mouse. Some people can. Some people, you know, if you got a little more money, you can get one of those 
W-A-C-O-M is the brand name tablet where you can have a stylus and draw with it. You know, there's newer things these days. But I just print out a sheet of paper or more than one. If, if I want to zoom in on a project, I just cut it into pieces. And uh, you can also see these things on my channel, by the way, at Charles Deering Scroll on YouTube. Anyway, uh, I print them out, <laughs> put the carbon paper under that and a clean sheet under that on a piece of glass, trace the parts I want to cut out. And it's a little more in depth than that. But uh, uh, then I scan them into the computer at 300 DPI. That way you can enlarge them and they won't distort that and the catalogs, one of them at 300 DPI. And I only scan them in for the sake of cleaning them up, meaning making sure all the closed areas are closed, you know, because up close you might have had a pen skip. And uh, if you want to call that digitizing, I really only do that for the sake of, make, of making them sellable because the average scroll sawyer, even a beginner, uh, Right off the bat, when they say a dark area, that's to be cut out unless it says cut out white. So I hope that answered your question. Um, JP, any questions? Uh, there's am I muted? No, no, no you're not. Okay. <laughs> We're just um, ignoring you. Right? Uh, no, no, I think I was muted or not. Uh, there's one from Dave, uh, David Jones from Portal Woodworks. He says, uh, "Ask Charles when he's going to do a big ass navy ship pattern." Oh crap! I did do one. <laughs> I've only done one, but it was one. Oh no, he wanted one that wasn't nuclear, so I have not done a non-nuclear aircraft carrier yet. But that was uh, a big ass navy ship. Uh, <laughs> uh there's a follow-up uh, from David. Where's my big ass navy ship patterns? <laughs> <laughs> Only got one, but I didn't find out till after right, it was uh, done. He wanted non-nuclear. Yeah. There's one from Steve Twidell. Uh, he says, "Has Charles ever gone down the route or route of public demonstrating, or does his disability hinder that?" It could hinder it, but I've never been asked to, and I think the main reason. See, I would love to teach a class on it, but my biggest roadblock from doing that, besides the disability, I can sometimes get through that is the fact that I only use spiral blades. Unless the class was about using spiral blades, I don't know if I'd be a good teacher because uh, most people teach with flat blades. Uh, so I hope that answered that. The disability could get in the way of it, but it, it would also be nice to get, because once I'm around people and I'm comfortable, I'm a people person. I'll talk your ear off, and I know you two guys know that, and most people in the chat because they've seen my show. But yeah, I would love to do it, but I don't think anybody would seek me for it because I don't use flat blades. Yeah, uh, Liberty Woodworking would like to know if you have any hot rod patterns. They're not really classified as hot rods. I have very early vintage cars all the way up to... Uh, modern? Mo modern. I wanted to say souped up, but I can't think of the name. It was a... Vi Souped up cars? It's one of those, like, it starts with a B. With a, a nice cars. Bugatti or something like, something like that. Oh, Bugatti Veyron. Yeah, Bugatti Veyron. I have everything from vintage, you know, spitting and puttering cars. Like yeah, a super all the way car. Up. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if any of them are classified as hot rods. I mean, because I try to use real photographs of actual uh cars through the years but uh to me a hot rod is a kit thing even if you build it from scratch i don't i don't know that i have any actual hot rods so i probably should have just said no <laughs> but you know me i i'll talk it to death did you um mention no you didn't um what so we have portraits like what you guys do what what else can give me exhaustively what else the scroll saw can what other projects the scroll saw can be used for i i have a lot off the top of my head but i want to see what you guys say i'm actually glad you asked that because the way we've been talking and most of what i sell is portrait style but you can cut letters out you can cut silhouette shapes out for people to uh, paint themselves you can make baskets you can make a vase oh. You can do inlay. Bowls, bowls or vases, you can do inlay. I haven't tried inlay yet. 
I have. But not a lot of people know you can do. I think it's because I use spirals on the kerp. Kerp is the cut line left behind by a blade, but most woodworkers know that. But anyway, uh, I haven't tried inlay yet, but you can make a bowl or a vase. And I have a, that's one of my most popular videos on my channel is how to make a vase using a scroll saw. Uh, so yeah, letters, baskets, those you can, God, you, uh, okay, it's funny that you mentioned that. Somewhere on my channel, I have a video of me doing a sphere, like a, okay, let's say you have a sphere and you cut off a quarter of it. I don't know what that would be called. A quarter of a sphere. Half a sphere or a quarter of a sphere? Yeah. Hey, look at my math. Listen to my math. You said you cut off a quarter of it. I said half a foot. Well, that was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's man magic. <laughs> uh, well, but I. it was funny because most people would use either a bandsaw or a jigsaw to cut the little slots because it, this was like a, a shelf that was supposed to look like part of a circle, you know, part of a sphere, like it's coming out of the wall. And it was the only time I had tried something like that. But I, I was so used to compensating for the flex in a blade of a spiral that I cut the slots with that after trying to use a jigsaw. But I couldn't get that jigsaw to not flex a little bit and to stay straight. I had I actually used a scroll saw to do the slots in each piece because they, they fit together. And I just thought that was funny because that's the scroller of me. <laughs> that's a, that's a t-shirt idea. Copyrighted. So scroller of me. Anyway, um, yeah, that that was. I don't even remember what the original question was. Oh, yeah, everything that could be done, but, yeah. but that was something where most people would use another tool, and I chose the scroll saw because I was so comfortable with it. But. I'll add another thing too. Um, if you go off into the rustic, which I'm uh, like heavily into at the moment, um, you could also do a cutout of, like I did, like a rooster, right? And then yeah. you take boards. And in the back, they could be painted, they could be stained, and you create wall art with it. Um, you can go, people make clocks and all sorts of, and three-dimensional, Jamie Page was showing me, um, what was that? Those three, can you explain that, Jamie Page? What was that? Remember, you, you showed me, um, boy, I wish you had it with you, um, a figurine. What was it, dude? Oh, oh, oh compound, compound cutting. Compound cutting. Yeah, so... There's all uh, that. What should I do with that? I can't remember what I've done with it now. Well, while he's trying to think of that, that a lot of people think you can only do pictures and everything we just listed, but you can also just you can do accent pieces like an an ornamental shape if you wanted to glue it to a headboard or a cabinet door or I mean you mm -hmm. don't only have to do pictures or actual objects, you can do ornate designs with them. See, yeah. I've actually I've actually made cake toppers as well for my I've done one so, for my uh, wedding cake. Just make sure the wood is not toxic. Yeah. If it is wrapped uh, saran wrap around the spike. Yeah. I've, I've, that out the hard way. <laughs> I've sold I've sold uh, um cake toppers as well. Uh, originally um I was selling cake toppers uh a couple of years ago using the scroll saw, but I felt like I wasn't using it for its proper you know, I've always felt that way, you know. It, it's, it, like if I don't do a portrait, but I don't have the patience to sit there and I don't have a uh, spiral blade, so it's like whatever I pick, I can't be picking stuff that, you know, so intricate. Um, and it goes back to the patience factor. It really is more of a patience thing than it is a talent thing, in my opinion. Uh, interesting. Inter well, I think it's, so I, I think it's a very cathartic tool. Um, you, you sit with it and whatever it is that you're doing. For me, when I go to the scroll saw um, for whatever my project is, um, non-traditional project, um, I feel like, oh, this is a fun part of the project. I always feel because I implement whatever I do on the scroll saw to whatever the project is. I don't always, you know, I don't do it just for the sake of the scroll saw. Um, but I love, I love the tool. I found a new, um, I, I just found a new life for it for me. Uh, it's, it's exciting and, and the possibilities are so endless that um, I find it to be one of the, the best tools that, that you can own. Well, as with any form of making for most people, uh, when you're making something, creating, you know, whatever it may be, it's therapeutic. I know that helps me a lot. Uh, designing the patterns is therapeutic. That's just a whole other story. But, I mean, when you're doing something you love or you need to keep your mind busy, that's another example of knowing when you're confident in your abilities is you can listen to the radio, you can sit there, sing to yourself, talk to yourself, 
and not have to pay attention to what you're doing besides, you know, the, well, visually. But I mean, it, uh, it's therapeutic. And I, I guarantee you, scroll sawing is not the only making uh, method out there that's therapeutic. And I know everybody out there will back me up. Right. And I would have added to that and safe. But since I already cut my, my finger on well, the scroll it's, it's saw, still safe. I mean, because you didn't die. You didn't lose a finger. But. Well, have you ever seen that? I'm not going to go there. Have you seen that? <laughs> Have you seen that video where the guy goes through the lave, the mechanical lave, and he goes, <laughs> and he comes out alive? You never saw I that. I did word? not sure. say that. <laughs> okay, let's let's even forget that. But Charles, <laughs> um, we we go ahead and hit us with where folks can find you if you have any shout outs that you'd like to give, um, and we'll we'll continue on the round. But go ahead. Okay, too many shout shout outs to give as far as friends because. Okay. Uh, because uh, there's just too many. 99% of my friends are online. All my designs and a lot of my YouTube videos, as far as, uh, you know, for a while there, are on woodenvisions.com up here, done by hardnailmedia.com, which I am a proud member of Makers Media Network. <laughs> I almost screwed it up, and I did not just snort. Uh, Instagram, I am the Charles Daring. Facebook, I'm the Charles Daring. My YouTube channel is Charles Daring Scroll. Don't even worry about Twitter because I barely use it, except for the default upload from YouTube. Uh, shout outs. As soon as the show goes out there, I'll thank the one. Well, uh, you can you, you can shout people out, or you don't have to. It's, <clears throat> it's you know. Well, I mean, it, it, Jamie's clearing his throat, but he's already plugged everything. He was going to plug it. Is there something I'm missing? <laughs> No, no, all Charles. I'm just gonna sit here and look at this tiger I've been doing of your patterns. Oh, very nice. Uh, I'm still confused because you've already showed it twice. So what am I missing? You're testing I, both my brain cells, and that is I, not I think, fair. I think he's saying you should shout out Jamie because that's that's <laughs> such a cool uh, thing to. He sat for fifty. How many hours? He stood. He stood. Not not sat, which is very really rare. Thirty hours. 30 hours, oh, yeah. that's 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 time invested, I'll tell you what. Yeah, if I thank every one of my needing, customers, I'd be here all night. Surgery. Was needing surgery. Well, I do appreciate you using my designs, uh, Jamie, and I also want to thank, uh, I'm going to forget names. Mike and Mike. Well, Mike and Mike, but I was referring to people that bought my T-shirts, plug, plug. Uh, the latest one was CJ Phillips and uh, Kim McCrory, Becky, I can't remember her last name. Uh Bunch, uh, five or six people have bought my T-shirts, and it's deeply appreciated because every little, every little bit helps, and it's also kind of flattering. But uh, those are available at woodenvisions.com, by the way. But uh, I, I don't want to name names of customers because I, there's there's too many. And it sounds like I'm getting flooded with customers. I actually don't sell many patterns, but uh, I appreciate everybody. You know, it's it's uh, I have very few people I dislike and. And because I'm in public, I won't hit name us, them. Hit, <laughs> us, hit, hit us with the the list of dislikes. Let's get this puppy rolling. Oh, trust me on this. You don't rolling, want me to go rolling, there. Rolling. I will be blacklisted from YouTube. Um, Charles, let me ask you this. Although we didn't get to everything really uh, that I wanted, to, let me ask you, did you have fun? Yeah, let's keep going. By God, I know everybody wants to know everything about me. I am so damn famous I could spit. Will, will, you, will you come back? If, they, if they'll let me, right now they want to fit me for one of them hug yourself jackets. But yeah, I'll, well, I'll, I'll come back. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, JP, final thoughts? Final thoughts. Yeah. Uh, obviously, my YouTube channel's uh, JP Woodwork. <laughs> my Twitter and Instagram, JP underscore Woodwork. My website's JP Woodwork.com. I am one fifth of the Makers International Podcast.com. Um, all sponsored by Harnell Media at harnellmedia.com. Um, well, yeah, I'm going to also mention again the, the giveaway <coughs> of the <coughs> bank and uh, the Yorkshire Grit, um, uh, the Tubby Yorkshire Grit, which ends on the 27th of January. Uh, and we'll be uh, announcing the winner on the, the 28th of January, uh, live on the air. Also, I want to mention 
um, Brandon Summerlin again, um, who's uh, having a, a, a double lung, or yeah, he's, uh, he's needs to have a double lung transplant. He suffers with cystic fibrosis. Um, he's uh, again, he's selling prints for ten Canadian dollars plus postage. Uh, if you want to head over to makersinternationalpodcast.com, uh, the top of the page it's uh, it's called 65 Roses by Brandon Sumlin. You get to see a preview of uh, the print and Brandon's email address is at the top uh, at the on that page if you're interested in supporting him um everything he's going through. And there's a little um little paragraph there about everything and all that lot. All right, so okay, that's uh that's about it. Hey, Lloyd, for the record, I was clearing my throat because he did it to me that I wasn't trying to <laughs> get oh, that's, over. <laughs> that's, that's, that's and, fine. Uh, oh, t- sorry, there's, uh, I actually want to shout out a couple of people. So I want to shout out uh, Make It Soph uh, for two for two reasons. One, uh, she got a package in the mail today, uh, which I actually which I sent her, um, which was for, she got a gift from a lot of different makers. Um from Carl, uh, from me, Carl, Jacobson, Heath Knuckles, and Chad. So you kind of get to see her reactions, and uh, that that was that's that's a really really good unboxing video. And uh, the second reason is um, we've actually got an upcoming collaboration um, coming. So uh, that, that's going to be out quite soon. And my second shout out is. Charles Deering, obviously, because he can get that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, listen, guys. So it's this is this was the first show of the year. Uh, next week, we have Carl Jacobson on here and Robin. Right, Robin will be on as well. I don't know. Well, we don't know. Carl's out in the uh, the chat now. Hope your fingers better, Carl. <laughs> I'm glad I was on before him. I can't, I can't follow him. Well, madness, there's a spectrum of madness, so uh, it's all good. And this is Quentin Tarantino style interviewing. So we go back and forth, but we did, um, we didn't cover everything that we wanted to with you. So um, I, I will be asking you again sometime in, in the future. Uh, and I appreciate you being on here, JP. Thank you for everything guys out there. Catch you next week. And we're out of here. Scroll on. I wanted to say it, but I wasn't going to screw up your show. Scroll on. Smell my finger. Bite me. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you.